passing laws, holding ministers and their departments to account, debating the issues important to local people. These are some of the activities that the Northern Ireland Assembly has undertaken during its 2013-2014 session. But the Assembly does much more as it works with the community and voluntary sector and engages with visitors from home and abroad. To get a flavour of this year's many activities, sit back and see how the Assembly has made a difference to all the people of Northern Ireland during this session. The Assembly has a crucial role to play in making Northern Ireland a better place for all people. As part of that, it amends and approves legislation and debates important issues in plenary. As well, Assembly members work in committees to hold ministers and their departments to account and question ministers about their work in ministerial question time. This year, the Assembly sat in plenary on 65 days and debated 41 motions brought forward by ministers. MLAs debated 231 private members' motions with 50 motions tabled by committees. For the first time, MLAs were able to ask ministers topical questions. These unscheduled questions enabled members to ask ministers questions about any part of their responsibilities. Members order it's time for questions to the Minister for Regional Development. And for the first time we will have topical questions to the Minister. There were 776 topical questions asked during this session. As well, ministers responded to 2,033 oral questions and 10,967 written questions. Would the minister accept that we need to embed greater Could I ask the minister in light of the fact that... In line with his announcement today on apprenticeships, how does he envisage his department... Can I ask the minister then, given what he, he, he said so far... And would the minister not agree? How many times has the minister met... I'm not sure if that resolves the question, minister. The question is, do you support... Can I ask the minister with the road and pavement works... Would the Minister use the current CAP reform? There were 510 committee meetings during this session, with 43 of them taking place outside Parliament buildings. Committees published 48 reports, including ones on the Human Trafficking and Exploitation Bill, on Transforming Your Care, Health Inequalities and Learning Disability, and a Legislative Consent Motion dealing with air passenger duty. Committees carried out a number of inquiries, including the Education and Training Inspectorate and School Improvement Process, the Careers Education Information Advice and Guidance in Northern Ireland, and Comprehensive Transport Delivery Structures. The Public Accounts Committee, which examines the way public monies are used published nine reports, including ones on the Agri-Food and Biosciences Institute, the PSNI's use of agency staff, and a follow-up report on improving pupil attendance. The official report of the Assembly's proceedings, which is produced by Hansard, continues to provide its reports in a timely manner. Within two hours of an MLA speaking in plenary, it is possible to view it on the website. The fully revised report of plenary is available by 8.30 the following morning. In addition to recording plenary sessions, Hansard covered 348 committee meetings, producing 633 reports of evidence sessions. Working with local community and voluntary groups, engaging with people from home and abroad, these are an integral part of the Assembly's work. The Speaker of the Assembly, Mr. William Hay, MLA, hosted speakers from the House of Commons, the Doyle Erin, and the Scottish Parliament to Northern Ireland. As part of the visit, the speakers visited schools in the northwest and Belfast, 
hosting Let's Talk events in Queen's University and Parliament buildings. Since its inception in 2012, the Assembly Community Connect initiative, which helps community and voluntary groups work better with the Assembly, has gone from strength to strength. This year, nearly 6,000 people took part in its events and presentations, with 600 participants taking part in 20 workshops, both in Parliament buildings and in venues across Northern Ireland. In June of this year, male and female MLAs took part in a cross-community football competition with World United Men and World United Women. The competition was organized as part of Community Relations Week and was hosted by Assembly Community Connect on the Stormont Estate. Assembly Community Connect also participated in 30 other events, including facilitating the Pensioners Parliament and the Black and Minority Ethnic Parliament, both hosted in Parliament buildings. During the 2013-14 session, the Assembly hosted over 900 tours and hosted over 50,000 people who attended a function, tour or exhibition in Parliament buildings. Visitors came from a wide range of countries, including Kosovo, China, Mongolia, Romania, Japan, Montenegro, Germany, the United States and Canada. This year, as well as providing a self-guided tour leaflet, the Assembly has introduced a video tour for those who use Irish Sign Language and British Sign Language, emphasizing the Assembly's commitment to improving access for all visitors to Parliament buildings. This year, the Assembly has been at the heart of a number of national and international events. The Giro d'Italia began its race in Northern Ireland for the first time. To celebrate the Giro, Parliament Buildings saw an exhibition on the art of cycling, which highlighted the industrial heritage of Belfast and incorporated iconic landscapes that riders in the Giro would pass. The run-up for the 2014 Commonwealth Games included a stop in Parliament buildings. MLAs, staff and guests were treated to the sight of the baton heralded by a piper. The Assembly celebrated Christmas with a choir performance, while the Chinese New Year brought a photographic exhibition and the Little Red Flower Dancing Troupe to Parliament buildings. The celebrations for St. Patrick's Day, which included a dinner and a concert, were for volunteers who support the emergency services. This year, Parliament Buildings saw the start of a major project to repair and refurbish its roof, as the building is an important and historic part of Northern Ireland's built heritage and a listed building. The agreed plan will ensure that the project preserves it for future generations. The new roof will incorporate a number of features that will add to the building's sustainability, including additional insulation and the installation of solar heating panels and rainwater harvesting. This is in line with the Assembly Commission's stated objective of improving the environmental sustainability of Parliament buildings. The Assembly also marked the death of one of its longest serving members, David McClarty from East London Derry. Much has been said and written since David McClarty sat passing in the early hours of Good Friday morning, all of which reflects the high esteem with which he was held in this house. Mr. McClarty had served in the Assembly since 1998 and had also held the position of Deputy Speaker from 2007 to 2011. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker, I accept the nomination and maintain the theme of stoutness. Thank you. <laughs> Representatives from all parties paid their respects in the chamber to a much loved and respected politician. These are just some of the highlights from the Northern Ireland Assembly 2013-14 session. In the coming session, the Assembly will continue to make a difference 
to the people of Northern Ireland and find new ways to engage. For further information on the work of the Assembly, the Secretariat's staff and its finances, please visit our website where you can view our resource accounts.